This is the second screencast in a four-part introduction to using the Theme Builder in Drupal Gardens. This screencast is for Drupal Gardens users who want to get more control using the selector tools and changing how their site looks. In previous screencasts, we looked at the themes, brand, and layout tabs of the Theme Builder. Now, we'll mainly focus on the Styles tab. In order to change something in the Styles tab, you have to select it. Here, I can see I'm selecting the site name in the header region. When I turn power theming on, I get a series of pucks. They're like buttons where I can select parent elements. If you're familiar with CSS, you can also show CSS, and you can see whether you're working with an ID or class selector. Here, I've selected sidebar A. You may notice now I have blue selector arrows. These appear on each element and help us navigate through parent, child, and sibling selectors. I can click the up arrow to see this is the selector for this specific form with the ID number 6. I'll continue to click up and I notice the next parent element. At this point, I can see I have sibling selectors on the side. Let's take a quick look at what this means. Imagine you clicked on an element. We'll call this the parent element since we're trying to see what the child elements are. Click the down arrow and it goes to a child element, which in this case is middle. Middle has arrows on the sides. If I click the left one, it takes me to a sibling element, which in this case is top. If I click down through the right arrows, I can go to the last child element, which is bottom. Now, if I were to click the up arrow, would you think I'm going to the middle or top elements? As you guessed it, it goes to the parent element. Let's see how this works on the site. Here, I've selected the middle divider within sidebar A. Click on the left blue arrow to see the top divider. I'll add a background color here in padding so you can see. Now I click the right arrow and go back down to the middle and the right arrow again, and I'm on the bottom element. Again, I'll add a color. These top, middle, and bottom dividers can be useful if you want to add a background image at the top and bottom with an image repeating down the middle. Next, I'll show you that the more specific you are, the more important a declaration is. For example, I'll select the page title here and add a background color. Then I'll deselect the page title, so I'm selecting the main divider now. And I'll set this background. You'll notice the entire background was changed, but the more specific declaration around the page title was kept. So keep this in mind when you're planning your designs. Let's go over to the Advanced tab and see a history of these test changes we've made in the Style CSS Inspector. I can hide different declarations and see how it looks without them, and then I can delete them. This will only show me the styles that I've added. I'll just delete some of the test changes I made. So after that explanation of some of the selector tools, I'm going to start working on my site. The first thing I'd like to change is the spacing between the banner and the page title. If I go here and click on the page title and select borders and spacing, I don't see any margins or padding on that element. So I click the up arrow to get the parent element. Now I see the margin. I'll change this to zero. The next thing I want to style is the site title. I'm going to change the font and the color here. There are additional tools for managing unique fonts on your site, and we cover those in another screencast. Here, I can change the color of the anchor tag, but I can also change the hover state as well to a lighter color. Next, I want to get rid of the border around the banner. I click on it and go to borders and spacing. I can click on one number at a time and just change one width. Or if I click the corners, I can select all the borders at the same time. You may have also noticed the banner is quite clever and resizes as needed depending on the width. I'll set it to zero. The next thing I'll show you how to do is change backgrounds. Besides changing color, I can also upload an image such as this one here. I'm going to minimize the theme builder so I can really see how it looks. Aha, the image is repeating in all directions. I only want it to stretch across the top. So I can change this to just repeat along the top. Now I can see I also need to change the color to match. Okay, but after all, I don't like that image. So again, go to the Advanced tab and delete that background. Now I'll select the body and change to a different image. Again, the default is set to repeat in all directions. If I had set it to repeat just up and down, it would look like this. So I'm almost ready. I just want to remove the borders around this element here, and I can select it to locate the border and set it to zero. I can select the background and set it to transparent. Okay, I'm ready to save. 
In this screencast, I gave you a quick introduction to all the selector tools, and then I began to show you how you can change margins and padding, how to change borders, backgrounds, and how to change the look of text. If you have any questions about what you've seen, please join us on the forums at Drupal Gardens.